Thank you very much, esteemed chairpersons. Uh, a very big thank you to Dr. Bansi Sahu sir and his team for having me on this August platform. It's indeed an honor and pleasure to be here. And uh, the topic of my talk is Health Policy Advocacy, Road to Diabetes Equity. So the objective of this talk is to emphasize that we clinicians are not only responsible for the health of our patient, but also uh, we are bestowed upon the responsibility to have an impact on the community as a whole. And we have that uh, thing in us that if we employ our all advocacy skills to the benefit of the community, uh, we can indeed make a difference in the lives of a lot many people beyond what we are treating. So to begin with, what is health equity? Equity is the absence of unfair, avoidable, or remedial differences among groups of people, whether those groups are defined socially, economically, demographically, or geographically, or by other dimensions of inequality like sex, gender, ethnicity, disability, or sexual orientation, as defined by WHO. So in a nutshell, the idea is to have equitable access of uh, services and resources for all. <clears throat> so what are the reasons behind diabetes inequities? There can be demographic disparities. Obviously, people living in metros have better access to care rather than the people living in hinterland. Uh, access to care in itself is an issue because of availability of skilled manpower and resources, health outcomes depending on quality of care, and barriers to equity due to varied reasons. This is a Lancet series on diabetes and health equity, and it predicted that by 2050, there will be 1.3 billion diabetics in the world. And by 2045, in four adults with diabetes will be from low and middle income countries. And within high income countries also, the prevalence of diabetes in minoritized groups is nearly 1.5 times higher than the white groups. And similarly, as of 2019, diabetes related mortality rates and disability ages life years were nearly double in low and middle income countries compared with the high income countries. So to impact diabetes outcome positively or negatively, there are certain uh, social determinants of health. Uh, important ones are economic development, public awareness and policy, access to high quality care, innovations in diabetes management, socio-cultural norms and how they influence their potential impacts on diabetes outcomes which were enlisted were rates of screening and identification of diabetes, rates of hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia, levels of obesity, pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes in youth and adults, detection of type 1 diabetes, rates of diabetes related cardiovascular mortality and complications, rates of diabetes related mental health conditions and complications, life expectancy, quality of life, levels of inequity in diabetes prevalence treatment, comorbidity and complications. So when we are trying to achieve diabetes equity, it is important to address the three A's of the systemic issues, the availability, accessibility and affordability of diabetes management services. And if you look at the, uh, this uh, circle of, um, uh, I would say, uh, structural uh, diabetes equity addressing phenomenon, the public awareness and policy is at the forefront. And uh, besides that, sociocultural norms, economic development, innovations, diabetes management, access to high quality care are all equally important. So as per American Diabetes Association, we believe health equity is a human right. So unless and until we understand that it is not only imperative, but it is compulsory that every human being living on this planet should have equitable access to diabetes care, we are not doing our duty properly. So how can we do that? So health policy advocacy, it is a very powerful tool for diabetes equity. And health policy advocacy is the process of influencing decision makers to improve healthcare outcomes. It ensures that healthcare policies align with the needs of the population, leading to more accessible, equitable, and effective healthcare. Why this advocacy is essential? Health policy advocacy is vital for a robust healthcare system. It promotes equitable access. Advocates work to ensure that everyone has equal access to healthcare services, regardless of their background or socioeconomic status. It leads to quality enhancement. Advocacy promotes high standards of care, patient safety, and accountability within the healthcare system. It leads to policy influence. Advocates share national health priorities, influencing funding allocations and resource distribution. It helps address disparities. Advocacy efforts aim to close gaps in healthcare delivery and outcomes across demographies. Who are the key stakeholders in health policy advocacy? Government and legislators, healthcare professionals, the NGOs, patients, and public. So friends, the thing is that if we are able to recognize that these are the stakeholders, it becomes easier because in our day-to-day -day practice, these people come to our clinics and we interact with them. The important is to identify who can influence whom and how we can achieve our longer and broader goals. So what are the principles of effective advocacy? The number first point is it should be evidence-based. We cannot talk in vacuum. We have to talk science. We have to talk evidence-based, data-based, 
proposals which can be uh, found consonance with the policy makers. Second, it should be ethical. We cannot demand things as per our wills and fancies. It's whatever we are demanding, it should be uh, connected with transparency, integrity and fairness to ensure trust and credibility. Third principle is it should be collaborative. Advocates work with our organizations, healthcare workers and stakeholders to amplify their impact. It should be sustainable. Advocacy aims to bring about long-term health improvements rather than short-term solutions. What are the advocacy strategies? It requires a multifaceted approach. There can be three ways of doing so. One is direct lobbying with the legislators. Second can be grassroots campaigns. Third can be through media and public relations. An example of a direct lobbying is uh, in the type 1 diabetes where uh, the uh, patients groups themselves reached out to the Ministry of Health and CBS in particular to allow uh, your uh, insulin and other things within their examination halls. So I think it is a very good example of how things happen in this country as well. Now what are the challenges in health policy advocacy? So the number one challenge is the political resistance. Policy reforms can face opposition from the political interests. Second, resource constraints. Limited funding and power can hinder long-term advocacy efforts. Third is miscommunication. So gaps in understanding between advocates and policymakers can create obstacles. How can we measure the impact of advocacy? So only doing the advocacy is not important. It's also important to understand the impact and measure it. So one way is to look at how the policy changes with time. Did the advocacy campaign lead to legislative or regulatory amendments? Is there any change in the healthcare access and outcomes? Did advocacy improve the healthcare accessibility, quality and patient outcomes? And third is, did it lead to awareness and public engagement? So how much public and media attention did the advocacy campaign garner? So these are the three ways broadly which we can uh, assess the impact of advocacy. What are the broader policy areas where I think the equitable diabetes care needs had more attention? One is expanded health insurance coverage. Second is increased funding for diabetes research. We all understand the research advance has different priorities, different organizations have different agendas, their own priorities. But broader, we need more research and more funding for that. Address social determinants of health. Policies that address housing instability, food insecurity, and education disparities create a more equitable environment for diabetes management. And last, promote cultural competence in healthcare. Encouraging cultural competency training for healthcare providers ensure that individuals receive culturally sensitive and effective diabetes care. So how can clinicians advocate for a better healthcare? So I have tried to prepare some tips on how healthcare advocacy can be done by clinicians. As healthcare professionals, you hold immense power to influence policy and improve patient care. By leveraging your expertise and experience, you can advocate for impactful changes that benefit your patients and communities. The first step is the most basic one, leverage your own clinical data. From your own data, try to identify gaps. Identify which are the disparities in access treatment outcomes. This data can highlight areas for improvement. Present this evidence to the various stakeholders. Advocate for solutions and lead by example. A physician treating numerous diabetes patients in rural areas could present data on poor access to insulin, advocating for subsidies or improved distribution networks. So these are a few examples. Join professional organizations like IMA, RSTI, ACCP, ACP, Diabetes India, <coughs> excuse me, and so through these uh, organizations or associations, you can gain access to the advocacy uh, campaigns. Engage with policymakers directly. Uh, through your own uh, networks to share real world insights, advocate for solution and influence policy decisions. The step is to first identify the policy makers who are relevant Thank you. at the local, state or national level, schedule meetings with them and present your data with evidence and actionable solutions to address healthcare gaps and improve patient outcomes. Please remember if you go to any policy maker and if you're not offering a solution, you're only presenting a problem, it doesn't make any sense to them. And when and only when you have also proposed some solutions with the data, then and only then they are ready to listen and act upon that. Provide testimony and consultation. So you can always provide your own experience at public hearings, advisory panels and health forums. You can very well use patient stories. See, uh, storytelling is an art in itself and stories move mountains. That's what is understood. So gather stories, careful, carefully document and collect anonymized patient stories that illustrate the challenges and impacts of the healthcare policy. In our clinical practice, we have always come across those patients who have got trouble in accessing you, accessing care, and how can we gather those stories is an art in itself. 
share those stories with policy makers media and other stakeholders amplify the impact by sharing these stories and you can raise awareness build empathy and create a stronger call for action collaborate with like minded ngos try to find out uh, those uh, kind of uh, ngos who share the same empathy same vision that you have the same passion that you have and help reach out to wider audiences and try to have a collective impact not the least at least you can do the bare minimum mentor future advocates try to inculcate this behavior of advocacy to your juniors to the clinicians who are at an early career stage and share your expert expertise with them host workshops inspire action lead by lead by uh, your own example and inspire action at the grassroots level so just to conclude and i am hopefully well in time uh, achieving health equity for diabetes requires a multifaceted approach that addresses the underlying social and economic factors contributing to disparities ensures equitable access to care and promotes culturally sensitive diabetes management programs by prioritizing equity we can create a more just and healthy future for all thank you very much